show you how you can use the scheduled payments functionality in receivables to create a payment schedule on a particular invoice for your customers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post an invoice for the full amount of the contract with my customer. And then I'm going to create a schedule of payments scheduled out for three payments in the future. And we'll take a look at how that looks in the AR aging. And the reason to do this is I may have a contract with a client of mine. And the terms are that he's going to make three payments. The first will be a down payment for 30%, for example. The second will be a progress payment. And the final payment will be a payment made on delivery. So this does not have anything to do with deferred revenue. It's specifically just for payments. So let's take a look at it. I've set up this invoice here. I've got three different lines. And it doesn't have to be three different lines. I just did this to illustrate. I've got a down payment for 30%, a progress payment for 60%, and then a delivery at the end of the project for 10%. Total is $100,000. I'm going to go ahead and post this. And now I want to go into schedule payments and take that initial invoice and break it into three separate invoices with different due dates. Here's the invoice that we just posted. And I'm going to add an additional receivables account here to track the activity in the general ledger. And then what I want to do is I'm going to specify the payment schedule. It's going to be 0%. I'm not charging interest on it. There are going to be three payments. And these are the due dates for the first payment. Now let's look at the schedule. I'll click on amortization. And I've got these three payments set up, but there's two things wrong. One is the due dates are incorrect and the amounts are incorrect. So I can modify these. I'll go in here and modify this to be the down payment amount of $30,000 progress payment of 60,000 and then the final payment of 10,000. Then according to my contract with my client, these are the dates that these amounts are due. So these are scheduled out into the future. The current date in my system is April 12th. The second payment is due July 12th and the final payment is due September 12th. So I'm going to hit okay. If I go back into the screen, you can see that the principal amounts have been updated to reflect the payment amounts. And then I'm going to post this. So that will post the schedule itself. But then I need to go back and post the scheduled payments. So let's go down the routines here. And these are the scheduled payments that are in my system. I can mark all of them. And then post. Now let's take a look at the aging. And here's the aging for this client. And you can see I've got three different invoices now, 30, 60, and $10,000. The original invoice is down here as a memo. You can see that it's aged out this way. What we can see is that the initial payment is way past due. The progress payment is past due as well. And that final payment is showing as a little past due. So now in this contract, because the third payment and the final payment were based on completing the project, it's turned out that that project has gone a little longer than I thought. So I want to reschedule that final payment. So what I can do is edit transaction information for that final payment. Here's the client here. And this is the final payment down here for $10,000. As it turns out, I'm not going to be able to get this done until November. So let's change the date on this and save that. Let's go back and look at the trial balance and see how it affects the trial balance. You can see that final payment has been moved into the current section. And I've modified this report to show the due date here as opposed to the document date. I've also changed the aging in my system to age based on the due date and not the document date. You can see that I've updated the aging periods here to make them a little easier to understand for the demonstration. Using the scheduled payments for AR invoices in Dynamics GP allows me to set out a series of payments for a particular invoice. Now this enhances just the basic payment terms that are available in GP and allows me to really stretch that out. I can stretch that out as much as I want to and with as many payments as I need. But again, this does not affect revenue recognition. It's merely a receivables entry. and allows me to manage my receivables more accurately. Mm -hmm.